that these products are made from a 260 million year old plant. I'm not a crazy lady, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> the plant is known as the Sotris, which stands for tongue shaped in Greek. This plant was the dominant plant during the Permian, a period 300 to 252 million years ago. All these products contain hydrocarbons, which are produced from coal. ESCOM uses coal to produce 90% of our electricity. You might be sitting there not being able to make a connection between these ancient plants and coal. Allow me to take you through a journey back in time before dinosaurs walked the earth. Imagine a huge swampy forest similar to mangrove forests today, which was filled with these glossopterous plants as tall as 30 meters, which is similar to a 10-story building. These plants spread throughout Gondwana, a continent which includes places that we know as Australia, India, Antarctica, South America, and South, sorry, and South Africa. These plants grew by capturing sunlight, converting carbon dioxide in the air and water to produce carbon-rich sugars known as glucose and releasing water, I mean, and releasing oxygen in the air. This process is known as photosynthesis. When these plants shed their leaves, they would fall to the ground and be broken down and become part of the soil. However, in favorable conditions, in standing water, the buildup of this leaf material would be quickly covered by sediments known as sand, silt, and mud. And through millions of years, through in this standing water, coal would form. So basically, coal is the remains of these ancient forests. That is why coal is known as a fossil fuel. I am a paleobotanist. I get to work with these fossil plants in the form of impressions, which are basically outlines or traces of this plant on rocks and coal. My science involves finding the best descriptive features to identify and name these fossils. Because these leaves are found throughout the world in the Gondwana country, these plants can be named something different in Australia or in India. So I come in and I describe these plants and find the best way to actually name them. So I hope to standardize the way we actually identify these plants and develop an online database available online to researchers across the world to allow for collaboration and for comparison. So the next time you switch on your lights at home, wear that sexy dress for date night or your favorite makeup, please do not forget to thank my power plant, Glossopterus.